I'm not going to get any closer. Aren't you a beauty? See you later. Hey up campers, wow, I am in for a treat tonight I think, I'm out for another wild camp in a new spot. I came out to wreck it earlier and I'm just making my way up the hill, <sighs> which is <laughs> never a good time to start filming is it? It's hard work walking up, but you can see that beautiful view behind me. Oh, and the sun's right in my face. <laughs> I've had a difficult time choosing where to camp today. I think because the weather's so nice, anywhere that I decide to camp is going to be pretty stunning. It's really hard to actually choose where I wanted to go. So I came up high today because I want to see her majesty set in <laughs> and I also want to see her other majesty rising the moon's just behind me there so going up high means one thing a bit of a climb my bag <laughs> 50 litres still still rocking the osprey or at AG50 it's just not as heavy and I've got my walking pole so I was um I wasn't filming because I needed to start getting up <laughs> getting up high quickly <sighs> but it's a Sunday and you know what happens on a Sunday in Peak District don't you every everyone's out to have a look look about because why would you not want to oh <laughs> so me included the weather is outstanding it's been gorgeous all day so I'm making the most of that before it decides to change get me through this day <laughs> back up back up beep 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 probably should lift it actually. I'm just gonna be responsible and make sure I close all the latches because there's livestock about all over here. It's a farm. Okay, so that's where I were earlier. I think I'm gonna go up, up and up. <coughs> so yeah, came out, boiled kettle, had a nice coffee, spot of lunch. Oh, listen to those birds. I watch the swallows on the cliffs, on the rocks. I watch the prey birds. I'm sure it was a big prey bird, like a hawk, uh, hunting in the forest. I came up a different way. Straight up through the forest. Because it was a time sensitive exercise if I wanted to get back out to the same location and camp. However, it's very late that setting sun, isn't it? About nine o'clock. So I'm hoping if I'm getting here late, we've got, there's not gonna be anyone else about and I'm not gonna bother the farmer that lives at the bottom of the hill. just there so I'll bring you back in a second when I've found where I want to be and I can breathe <laughs> I'll take it steady steady to the top because this is where we're going 
that nipple on top there. There's another nipple on top there. Very famous hill in the Peak District. But one that is probably not visited or publicised as much, but one that you see from everywhere. And it, it's fascinated me for a long time, especially when I've been up on tops there. When I've been up on Derwent Edge and I've been looking down at it thinking, wow, check you out. <laughs> Whew, right, I'll see you in a bit. bad view that is it oh, I'll talk to you more about what I can see when I get to the top <laughs> oh that definitely filled me air with lungs <laughs> there's Wind Hill over there you can see there the trig point just gleaming little white speck on top Oh, I can hear a bird and see butterflies just flying about. Magic. Absolutely magical. So, there is Crook Hills actually, that one over there. But then there's this one. What did I say about not camping on the places that people usually camp on. <laughs> this is one example. Nice and blustery up here. Wind's just blowing straight over the top. Oh, so different, even just a few feet away. <laughs> My bag's whistling. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Right, well, I've decided to set up because it's quite quiet. I can't see anybody about. It's about quarter to eight. So I've set, set up late and leave early. That's my plan. A bit more windy just over to that side. But that'll be a good test for Diana, won't it? So, yeah. Let's see how it goes. I am very much in view, but it is what it is. If I'm asked to move on, I'll move on. I am on privately owned land, so if they ask me to move, I'll move. If they don't, then I've had a lovely camp and I've not had to worry about it. So probably just there is where I want my bed to be. So I've got my Durst and Exmid, Diana, some new jewellery. We've got some Eastern pegs this evening and some carbon core pegs by 3UFL. This is where I need to do a bit of rejigging to make sure that they're all pulled out square. The back pole to you. I'm not going to undo the clips this time. I've been practicing in my garden. I'm going to leave the buckles attached. Oh, there's another hiker down there. That's the thing. They all follow the footpath that runs from the farm over to the direction of Oldport Castles. One thing about these pegs, you know that you know they're not going to go anywhere. They're flipping brilliant. Right. Cheap crap. Another reason why I bring wet ones with me so I can clean my hands after. Dirty little sheeps is. 
Put these in first. The beauty about tents, you can just do it your way. Get tips from people, but ultimately, just do it your way. The ridge line is perfecto. They come in this nice bag, the carbon core ones. Here they are. Look at that sexy, sexy peg. It's as light as a pencil. Yeah, I think these are 15 centimeters, these. Nice little addition to my kit. That's that done. The hill makes such a shadow down below. Behind you is just looking absolutely stunning. I can't wait to show you. Yep, a little windy up here. Windy Miller. Happy with that, nice and solid. Don't think I'm going to bother with this one because I have my door open anyway. And there she is. She looks all right, doesn't she? That's not bad, is it? Nice place to watch the sun go down. What a beautiful place to camp. And I didn't put the tripod there because you could see my shadow in it. <laughs> so what I've decided to do is there was quite a bit of action down at the farm earlier. So I think some sheep dog, sheep dog training and what have you. Well, the lambs ran up into that bottom field, so I thought, I wonder if the farmer's coming to get them back in. So I've actually dropped the tent. Now that's one good thing about the Durston, is if you're doing a bit of stealth camping, or you're waiting till last minute to, to get everything out, obviously I've, I've pitched it, and I've just lowered the poles and put them on the floor, and it's flat to the ground now. So. When I'm ready to camp, I'll raise the poles again and we're ready to go. So I'm going to wait for a little longer before I put it back up. Enjoy this sunset. Quite a bit of time before the sun goes down anyway, so I'm going to get my kettle on and have a drink. And luckily the weather's nice. If it weren't, it'd be a different story. Well, I and half got some nice views over here. I'll take the camera around so you can see. Glorious bit of sun over there. I'll find myself a nice seat to enjoy this view. Watching the sparrows and birds flying about, it's fascinating. <laughs> Perfect little seat. Take your pick. It's all over beautiful. I wonder if the lambs do roam overnight. No. That's better. Let's see. <laughs> HD. Super HD. Long distances are definitely blurry now. I need to just admit defeat, don't I? Hmm. You can just see the sunset, can't you? Hmm. That's it over there. Don't pick it up very well on camera. It's dead cosy on this edge. Oh, kettle's boiled. I haven't even sorted my sachet out. Go for a coffee.
see how quickly that sun's going down because it will be on the shop and I'm moving to. It's like I'm being looked after by all these hills on this little one. You see Bamford Edge, Wind Hill, Loose Hill, Kinder, Backtor, Wheelstones, Magic. In the thick of it. really enjoyed watching the sunset over there. Oh, the glow on those clouds now is just phenomenal. So yes, I've had the confidence to put my tent back up now. Things have um, quietened off. You can hear less, less road traffic from in the valley, in the reservoir valley. And the moon is well, well and truly risen. So I'm going to just set up my sleep system as usual. It's the Big Agnes Rapid SL and my um, Sierra Designs sleeping bag, Cloud 20. It can be used as a quilt, put your feet in it, just put the quilt and have it open because it's a zipperless sleeping bag. So it's a winner. Well, it's all completely clagged out everywhere, really quickly. It's really looking quite angry over Wind Hill. Really dark black rain clouds. Um, and it is pitch black. <laughs> Just got my sensor light lighting me up. So I don't think I'm going to be too late out of bed. I'm going to get an early night. It's 10 o'clock. So not really much to report tonight other than I'm looking forward to a nice rest on the top of this hill. There's not much wind at all. It's died off. It looks like everywhere is covered in cloud apart from me. It's just completely surrounding. So I'm expecting it to come over pretty soon. I, I'm not going to sit and chat much tonight. I've had my dinner at home. I don't want to have another drink because um, I had one earlier and I just want to basically rest, lay down in my sleeping bag and rest, get an early night. And because the wind's died off, I can feel a few midges about. So I will bring you back if anything exciting happens. Otherwise, I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, everybody. Wow, that was a rough night. 
it was blowing a gale. Absolutely. Oh God, I'm just, it's cold. I've just opened a hot hand as well, which seems a bit excessive, but I've been outside to re um, tension the guy ropes on uh, this far corner because that's what's getting the wind on that corner there. Oh, it had just extended all the way and it was flapping because the tension was no longer there in the tent. So, yes, first, first, um, <laughs> I'm half asleep. That's the first wind test for Diana. And I think she's done pretty well. Because it said nine mile an hour gusts on the weather forecast when I checked it at about half two last night. Oh, see my breath as well. It's definitely Baltic up here now. Ooh. So, the last thing that I want to do is go outside the tent. It's totally clogged out. I've had to wear earplugs last night. The wind was really loud. Oh, so I'm just, I've got my kettle on down here. Not to see outside, unfortunately. But you can't win them all, can you? It was really warm. I didn't even need this on, but then I woke up. Guess what? I forgot. I forgot my kiddo is there. So I had to get out of the tent and walk over there in the dark for a wee. And it makes you realise how much you appreciate a little bit of kit when you don't bring it on a camp. <laughs> so not having to get out of the tent has become something that I'm used to. Before, I didn't used to bother, just used to get out. I've been out in the wind, rain, snow. <clears throat> but I've not been out for a long time and last night was like ugh I spay the details I dove back in here got back in my sleeping bag and thought thank my lucky stars and it's like spring it's not even summer um, it's spring it's not even winter You can see the tent blowing about. Takes a lot of hammer. Each corner takes a lot of hammer. I'm so glad I got those eastern pegs. Because they are not moving. They are so rammed into the ground. That I feel that once the tension is okay on the, the corners. Then it's not going anywhere. It's just incredibly strong. The poles really sturdy. Oh god! Oh, so I'm gonna do have a nice drink, get me breakfast. <clears throat> I brought porridge, sultanas. Can't beat it. I've also got a little bit of fruit because last night just didn't feel like it. I couldn't believe how fast time went. I think it was because I was chatting on the rock, waiting for the sun to go down, with the tent down, hiding. I didn't want my camp to be ruined. Kettle's boiled quick. Um, and then all of a sudden it was time to go to bed. This is well needed this morning. Cappuccino this morning, anybody? It's going to leave that. It's nowhere near my tent, so it should be good should be Mr. Flame. I've not lit my stove in here before but it's been in the solo so we'll be good. Mm, that is a good smelling coffee. Nothing quite like that. Just gonna enjoy this for a minute <sighs> without a view. <laughs> Porridge time start to wake up a bit now. I've had that coffee. Blimey. 
things get you on. So I've improvised. I am now using my Tupperware as a cup because I only brought one mug, my 500ml pot from my Borderader cook set. And actually, it means that my drink cools down quicker so I can drink it quicker. <laughs> oh. So I am watching my tent, seeing what pulls and what sags and what flaps. And it seems to be the end that's getting the wind. And I think I've pitched it perfectly in that sense. That bottom corner's getting the wind rather than a whole side or a whole front of the tent. So, But one thing I didn't do was peg this bungee cord down. I think that'd take a bit of strain out of the other side. Yeah. It feels, I don't know what the wind speed is, but it feels much stronger than nine miles an hour. Maybe 20 mile an hour gusts, something like that. It ain't off whipping around it though. I'm just having a cosy in here. I've eaten my fruit. Healthy breakfast. Still, I'd rather spend Monday morning here than I would at work, so. <laughs> Monday off. Tuesday off. Back Wednesday night. I've noticed when I'm watching other people's YouTube videos that they don't bother with breakfast. Just get themselves off. I'm starving in mornings, probably because I didn't munch through loads of rubbish last night. All right, I confess, <laughs> I had those bite-sized brownies from Sainsbury's and a few sultanas, but I didn't have my hot chocolates because I thought last thing I want to do is be getting out of my tent for a wee all night, especially if weather's turning. I love the smell of porridge in the morning. I think as well, it's um, strange to break the habit of a winter camp. That used to having to keep warm, that I usually have warm food at night. And the, the nights are so long, but now they're not. You go to bed at 11, you're waking up like five hours later with a bit of broken sleep. Come camping out in winter, it's dark by about four, and you're in the tent for at least 16 hours. So different now, she says, as it's <laughs> flapping about all over the place. Still, it's good to see how she performs. I'm going to let this porridge do its thing and I'll take you outside for a look so you can see what um, the wind's like. Let me know what you think, how fast it is. Don't phase me. I know she can do it. <laughs> ah. I ain't got enough puff in me this morning. Right, I put you on my selfie stick. So you can come and have a walk outside with me. I wanted to bring you back right now because look what we've got. <laughs> I've actually got some lovely sky. I can see the clouds moving really fast. Looking around Diana then, in this wind, she is there. I'll show you the side that's getting the wind. Ooh. This side, this edge, very windy. That kept loosening off because that's where the wind's hitting. But I think with the Durston, that's the, probably the best end you can face into the wind. But these line locks kept slipping a little bit. 
she's looking pretty good. <sighs> At least it's not raining, eh? That's one good thing. Nice weather front moving over. Kinder's totally clagged out as usual. <laughs> Look at her there. I tell you something though, I would have never known how windy it was while I was in there last night. Obviously I could hear the wind <laughs> and you'll have seen that, but she stood up pretty well on this edge. Look at her, taking her out, good old battering is Diana. She can do this. She's made of strong stuff and she's mine. And if she's anything like me, she's a determined woman. Let's see what a coffee can do it morning, eh? <laughs> I couldn't even speak to you this morning. I was so shattered. So I didn't bring my gloves. I left them at home thinking, yeah, it's going to be nice. Warm morning, sunrise, idyllic. No, nope. this is the kind of thing that you need to be prepared for. That right there. Come on, Cloud, shift over. Let's have a bit more of this. I liked that. Now you've got to spoil it, haven't you? Lady Bower Dam down there. Very naughty clouds behind me. They can behave themselves. I've got my slippers on, so I'm not going <laughs> to venture too far anyway. It's 6 a.m. Time check. This is what happens when the doors open. Nice and flappy. <laughs> And the calm is restored. Let's shut that. <laughs> With this tent, it is all about trial and error. It's all about you practicing. Because it's like someone saying to you, here's a picture of a tree. I want you to copy it. Your interpretation of that tree will be different to the person that drew it in the first place. Your skills of drawing that tree are different to the person that drew it in the first place. So you've got to just do it yourself. And your perfect pitch might not be the same as someone else's perfect pitch as long as it's good enough for you. That's my thoughts on it all anyway. Packing up inside the tent. Always reminds me of a winter camp. <laughs> Many times I've been getting this away quick, quick shots to get up because I've been so cold I needed to do it to warm up. <laughs> and when it's all fluffed up, then I'll take some compressing down. Keep me down coat on actually because although it's not cold in here, it's cold out there. Laughing about all over the place you are down there. <laughs> so right now we've not got the microphone on. It'd be interested to see the difference. I'm not used to using it. Have to go away. <laughs> Look at that. What a complete chaos. I'll tell you why though. That bottom end is just slapping it off again. I just run down the hill to show you where the tent is in relation to Crook Hill. <laughs> so this is Crook Hill, <clears throat> right at the top of there. And then there's a dip in the middle. And then there's my tent, just on the top. So now I'm going to take you around to the other side to see what's down the other side. A guy passed me running up here yesterday <laughs> while I was wrecking. <laughs> Look, <laughs> such an amazing piece of landscape. And look how the cloud, there's a blue cloud right above. It does look really nice. I'll tell you what this reminds me of. <laughs> It reminds me when, you know when you're a kid, when you're a kid and you're on your bike and you can see a big hill coming, so you pedal faster <laughs> to get up the other side. 
Let's go. I suppose I've always wanted to do this. In a child comes out and you just keep running. Keep on running without a sports bra on. Get two black eyes. That's enough messing. Cheeks pink. Awesome design effect. So when I don't do any talking at night, I make up for it in the morning. Diana is pitched on the top of here. You can't quite see her though, because she's too high up. I'll just do a little spin around and show you the view from here. Still quite high up on here. So just gonna have a walk up now and I'll show you on the way. The wind gets up when I'm up here. Yeah, so I can just about see her through there. It's an amazing plinth for her, isn't it? Whoops, let's just have a climb up here. No rooks, I can't so much easier, she says. She's not coming across here yet. <laughs> Oh, and here she is, once again, facing the wind, <laughs> bless her. I decided before I did my little runsies over there, over there, to just double peg her out. So I'm gonna think, put some longer attachment points on the ends after this. It's definitely taught me that I need to give her some belts and braces on the bottom corners. Time to go home. I'm off. This is where I were. Don't forget, leave no trace. No trace that you've ever been here. If not, leave it better than you found it. And I didn't find any litter here. Off we go. See you later, campsite. Thanks a million. There's Crook Hill. It's really calmed down on this side, so I thought I'd say goodbye. So I had a few objectives for this camp. One of them being, the main one being, I want to camp on the top of a hill. I want to climb up to the top of a hill, set my tent up and sleep on it. That is all I wanted to do. I also fancied getting getting out somewhere different, somewhere that's not got birch trees for once, although I have missed those. Um, camping on the top of a hill like that is a lot different. You've got different challenges, especially if the weather turns. So it was a test for my Diana Xmid. <laughs> so thank you for tuning in this time. I hope you've enjoyed what I've seen. It does feel like you're here with me when I come out. It's quite comforting actually when I'm on my own and to know that there's other people out there that enjoy doing this as much as I do. I'm so lucky I've been out for four weeks on trot. I made an extra video about the Durst and Exmid as well. So that's been really nice, enjoyable. I suppose part of me feels like I'm trying to get it all, all in before the upheaval of moving house. Um, but I'm sure that that'll be a welcome break to get out if, uh, if things get a little bit heavy <laughs> with our renovations. So that leaves me to say goodbye which I can't always do very easily. Um, I'm trying to work out which way to go. This way, nearly. <laughs> so, thanks as always for watching, coming along with me, appreciating the sights, 
and seeing Crook Hill in the Peak District. I will be out again soon. I am not sure when that's going to be, but I'm sure I'll not leave it too long because I do get withdrawal symptoms. <sighs> it's just been what I needed. So take care out there if you're camping and don't forget to leave a comment. It's always really nice to read those comments that you leave. Um, and I'm sure I'll, say, I'll be taking you to a nice location next time I go camping. Somewhere different. Um, and like I've said, I have got my anniversary camp coming up. And I've also got my first year on YouTube coming up as well in July. So I've got those two camps coming up to look forward to. So I will see you on the next one. Take care.